Dr. Maria. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Murder Hobo Between the Rolls. If you were sleepy out there, you shouldn't be anymore. Before we get started, I'd like to say follow us on Twitch. Take a look at our YouTube archive. And if you're tired of looking at our faces, you can click on one of the links below in here and listen to our audio podcasts. They're almost up to date. If only Frank would get off his ass and, you know, load them up some more. Uh, other than that, uh, if you're feeling bashful, don't. Follow us on Twitter. And if you follow us on Twitter, you can hook up with us and email us over at mhoboinc. And you can join in one of the one-shots! Yeah! Yeah! Trust me, uh, uh, you will be happy, especially when you get to join our Discord chat and get some cool, awesome swag when you do that. Guys, uh, and if you want to support us, buy some cool swag. Like I said, there's also a second link that you can take a look to here. And hey, if you want to support us, also you can sub to the channel. <laughs> yeah, there you go. That'd be there great. You go. Uh, let me see. Checking my notes here. Let's see. Oh, are you grumpy with how your dice have been rolling lately? <laughs> May I suggest pirate dog dice for when you roll like shit? Pirate dog dice. The entire and cast of cred needs to get sets of that is, that is, dog dice. That is true, Holy including shit. the dungeon master. <laughs> Actually, well, mine I think were I've too been awful. rolling pretty well. Thank you. <laughs> mine were too awful this week. Mm -hmm. Okay. <coughs> anyway, does your game stink? Well, honestly, guys, it should with Adventure Sense. Really get those players in the mood. Or if you are a player and you just want to imagine what putrid mm -hmm. sewers smell like. Careful, though. Don't want to get sneezy with that. You'll have to go see a doc. Uh, Speaking of docs, though, none of them are here tonight. We just have a bunch of dopey uh, uh, sneezy, players. sleepy. Yeah. Yeah, no, I think I got it. I got all seven doors. <laughs> There's only four. Uh, by the way, we're talking about doors tonight, if you didn't pay attention at all. Just everything over your head. But we'll get to that later. First off, let's go around, introduce some people, starting with the bottom, going to the top. Carol. Hi, everyone. My name is Carol. As he just said, uh, I am a longtime gamer, occasional GM, and commission mini painter. Uh, as I said, you can find me on Twitter at muses underscore touch. Hey, might as well say it for a change. And uh, let's see, I am normally on the Cred campaign where I play a half elven ranger named Anja Jaeger. And I can also be found here every other week. Anja. Yeah, yeah that's right. So I said, Anja. He keeps, no, Anja. He always friggin' screams. Yeah, well, it's better than Anya that Kyle always calls her. And I can Almost be found like a I'm lot of times. pronouncing it like it's a Germanic name. Shut up. Yeah, that's what I, I think the way it would go. But anyways, also I can be seen on many of the one shots, although not this week because I believe the one shots may be full this week already. Which is awesome. I that's mean, like holy yeah. crap. We yeah. don't have to play, guys. Yeah. We don't yeah. have to play. <laughs> <laughs> Carol, no, what are you gonna do? <gasps> I, <laughs> come true. on, what I do when I'm not playing, uh, unless no, we, you're playing. Play you'll you'll be somewhere else playing. <laughs> no, no, no. Well, no, I have another game usually that leads right up before that, and if it doesn't go long, no. I I will a lot of times hop on Twitch. Yet. Otherwise, I'll probably paint minis or. There you go. So so, day. Carol, are you a mini painter? I am a mini painter. Wow. Tell us a little bit about that. <laughs> so what? It's, wait, wait, wait! Don't we have a show to run? Yeah, I know, but you didn't oh, go speaking into. Speaking of uh, which, gosh, okay. David, introduce yourself. Ha! <clears throat> Hi, I'm David. I play uh, Ingve and Crow in the Calamity campaign, and I also play Zadar in Cacophony. Otherwise, you can catch me here on Between the Rolls usually, and every once in a while, a one shot. So. Yep, that's me on uh, as uh, in a nutshell. I'm pretty much like the newbie among the hobos as far as experience wise go, because some of these guys have been playing for 30 or 40 years. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. But by the way, it's been a fun I'm old. you mini paint. 
<laughs> I do, but not well. <laughs> uh, we need to get you better. We found out a new thing about David tonight. I didn't. Oh know my that. god, that's I think actually I did know that that you did. <laughs> well. Yeah, I, I started painting. My first mini was actually at a con. Yeah, in between uh, sessions. Twenty years ago, before COVID. Yeah, it seems at like it. Was but it seriously, a, yeah. Was it a paint and take? Did you go mm. and they? It did? was a painting table that they had, and uh, oh, Reap, yes. they had Reaper minis, and yeah, I painted an eye tyrant, a little bitty eye tyrant. So, oh my god, yeah. that's what I do with cons. Eyeballs. Yeah. I run those awesome. tables. Mm -hmm. And finally, the cream of the crop, that foam on a Guinness that you get, except not a bad Guinness, but like a good Guinness where they do mm -hmm. the extra stuff and it's fresh from oh, yeah. ireland from the urinals from ireland the hair the hair color is about the same as that foam too yeah. so. <laughs> we have scott scott why don't you tell us a bit about yourself i thank you for that great comparison to foam <laughs> fluffy and unsubstantial and means nothing you blow it away. he's on to me guys run <laughs> <laughs> hi i'm scott um, I am a longtime DM, but I'm mainly a player on uh, on the Murder Hobo. I play uh, Rakir on the uh, Calamity campaign, and I'm um, sometimes a player on the One Shot. So I play uh, normally Eric called Justice Man, uh, who's uh, one of my favorite persons to play. But I'm also um, somewhat of a <clears throat> legend in my own mind um, and uh, love the sound of my own voice. And so you'll hear me expound tonight on all the different types of dwarves. Um, even when I don't know anything about it whatsoever, I can speak so convincingly. That you yeah. <laughs> mm. I know what that's like. Man, you're making me, I'm sad because we're missing DJ tonight. And oh. if there's anyone who can talk about dwarves, but only gully doors from dragons. Yeah, That's all yeah. he can talk about. I know, but he's running a game right now. Oh, he's oh my Cthulhu game is better. Uh, <laughs> it is okay. Cthulhu. That's, it. it is Cthulhu. That's the funny part. It is Cthulhu tonight. But coming down to it, guys, before we even talk about short people... They ain't got no reason. Oh. I was about to say, oh, I hear, I, I hear, what's his name? Yeah, uh, Randy Newman. We'll do that Nectar. later, and we'll have the Twitch stream taken down. Yeah. I love Randy Newman so much. Carol, you were uh, playing last Thursday in the Cred campaign. I was? Uh, I, I don't know. I, I don't know anything. Oh, else. yeah, I was. Um, I don't what think happened? it's, it's not on? a, it's not a hugely long explanation, actually. Uh, we started out with a fight. Uh, we were we started out when we were on the the skiff. I believe is what type of boat it is, uh, rowing from the ship to shore, and we had been attacked by a couple of deep ones. And at the when you picked it back up, uh, Riley, aka Ernie's character, his warlock was in the water three rounds from drowning, uh, and. And Bran was fairly seriously wounded. I was actually okay for the time being, and and we and uh, we woke up our uh, our sorceress, uh, Cleo. She was sunbathing. Yeah, she was mm -hmm. sunbathing back of the boat for, for for the end of that. Episode. During the storm. <laughs> but unfortunately, unfortunately, yeah, she she was not feeling great the week uh, two weeks before. So the person, not the character. Uh, but it was nice to have her back, and she was pretty clutch. Uh, but we took, we dispatched those nasty uh, deep ones. Uh, Ernie, I'm sorry, yeah, Riley managed to uh, break free and and saved himself. Uh, but we got out there, and we we were about to dispatch the one, but it ran away. How dare you take away our kill? Uh, first rule is a DM: make sure they can't kill everything. <laughs> So we get to shore, um, and so basically it was just setting up camp and such. Uh, I went hunting, and I took Cleo with me hunting for boar. Uh, <laughs> I was not sure that about uh, actually fighting a dire boar with just the two of us, although thankfully you allowed Jeremiah to tag along after the fact. 
because I think we kind of needed him because poor Cleo got. I've got to be uh, much meaner, and you have to be nicer to Jeremiah if you're going to keep using him as a I scapegoat to take all the damage <laughs> for you guys. Actually, I haven't. I haven't been mean to him at all. So if anything, <laughs> I was going to be the one who was going to help him out when he was passed out drunk. Um, I have my character. I have a, I, I'm just got nothing against him. Um, but let's see what else happened. I'm trying to remember. DJ DJ is the one who investigated the flotsam and jetsam that was on, and he found a book or a pamphlet, which I believe he read. Three bodies. Three bodies. That's right. The three bodies, uh, and some other salvageables and such. And I remember there was a pamphlet he read, and I believe had to make a save for that. And what the hell did Riley do? Shit. He got on everyone's nerves. Oh, yeah. Well, he already is on everyone's nerves because essentially he's like, he tried, he didn't try, but he failed it. He's rolled enough nat ones on different skills that uh, he's now pretty much annoyed everyone. And we're not all, we all are kind of wondering if maybe he's actually trying to sabotage the, 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 the expedition. I don't know. I mean, we know he's not. It's just his freaking dice are trying to sabotage the expedition. But that was, I mean, that was, I think that's pretty much about it on what happened. Uh, but it was a lot of fun to play. And because when you have more fights, we had two fights. When you have more fights, it does tend to take up more time. So there's a little less plot. But it what was a lot of fun. About? What are you talking about? It just was... because you weren't part of the plot doesn't mean it didn't happen. No, no. I just said there's less of it when you have more fighting because the fights just take longer. And then they're going to complain. There there's plenty. not enough, you know. Oh, no. So I, no, there was, encounters. there was, exactly no, was. this was, this was, I thought this was good. It was a good balance of both. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, it's, I, I, enjoy, I really enjoy playing and I think it's, it's, oh, you should all be watching it. It's a great campaign. <laughs> Bran had to make a save against a horribly infectious disease that it oh, has no right. known that's cure. Oh, that's fucking disease. That's right. And I then, of course, you guys had, had to make, make a con it. save at the end of the night there. Yeah, and I know, I know, damn right well, I failed. I know, I didn't roll. I don't even, I didn't make a 10. I forget someone else I know for sure failed, too. Because I think oh, they rolled worse uh, than I did. Riley and Cleo both rolled a 7. Bran oh, had the highest with a 15. Before I, Oh, it's right, 15. I was going to say 14. But hey, in fact, they even remembered it that well. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it, yeah, yeah, that's three of us failed that save. So tune in next time to see what comes of it. <laughs> maybe, maybe nothing. I mean, maybe the GM will forget because I have had that happen to me before. The GM, I think, I have it that written down on my big screen behind Damn it. me here. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> so All isn't right. it a rule of thumb in Cthulhu not to read anything because you yes. can lose your mind? <laughs> the, funny, the funny thing is DJ a long time told me that he, if he's ever playing a cool, cool, yeah, Cthulhu game, he'll never ever like read anything or explore anything or anything like that. That's the only way to stay safe. <laughs> nice. He has like, picked up so many things here. You know, in comparison to the, the rest of us, it's really funny. Got it. <laughs> and it's even funnier considering I think he also has the highest wisdom save, and he's also the one who's failed the most <laughs> percentage wise. Dice giveth, dice taketh the away. They take us a taketh away from us a lot in this campaign. Yeah. Uh, Tell me about soon it. Soon enough, two weeks from now, it's going to be a calamity, but not as big of a calamity. As Saturday's B-side campaign, I believe, Scott, you were out, correct? Yep. Not to make him feel You're guilty, muted, but... Scott. Yes, 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 yes. I, yeah, I, was, he, I was previously engaged. He ditched us. Yeah, you ditched us for what again? It, was, it wasn't for anything important. <laughs> no, 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 no. It was, uh, it, was a scheduled, it was a scheduled anniversary. No, no. That's it's not important at all. You don't want to end up like the Gates, and that's the important thing here. That's true. So, That's true. David, true. tell us what That's happened right. at Calamity right. before Scott suffers one of his own. Well, you got to love the B-sides <laughs> on great albums and things like that. So the B-side of Calamity is actually pretty funny, actually. So it seems lonely without Scott, though, man. So <laughs> mm, I believe it. 
But uh, yeah, uh, B side, the calamity, the uh, adventures of Brother Cup, Brother Coda, and Krell and Crendor Sue. Yeah, so we picked it up where we <coughs> left off last time. Uh, the villagers of Toe Town, pretty much massacred by the Grong. Uh, there's not too many people surviving. I rolled very, very high on that percentage, and I really wish I hadn't. <laughs> so. Uh, only 3% of our population survived, and that's basically us. And I think two other people or some two or three other people, something like that. I don't know. It's crazy. So anyway, this uh, episode, we pick up with this, and we start with the dice roll to see whether or not Crow survived the night. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Crow had spared the dying cast on him, but it was still pretty iffy whether or not he's going to He's going to survive. So I did a roll off between Frank and I, and I won. Uh, I won that roll off. So Crow survived and uh, made use of some medicinal herbs that uh, he was supposed to inhale instead of ingest. So, <laughs> so the effect for the, you know, the hit point regeneration took a little longer. So, but anyway, so the guys there in Crendor Sioux are, are tasked to go out and explore, find out uh, more of what, if, what has happened towards the southeast of, um, of Toad Town. Uh, through the jungles, uh, we are uh, tracking the ground, looking for any other signs of them or anything, but just exploring forward. Uh, we come along uh, a trail of... Um, bodies uh strapped in intermittently at different points uh you know throats slashed on and you know horribly uh you know disfigured uh we noticed that they're wearing the same kind of amulet uh we actually took one of them for reference and as we made our way towards the river we were set with the challenge of crossing the river uh as luck would have it, there was a raft. The, the people that were killed were act, had actually left the raft. So, so we venture out on the raft. Uh, yeah, we engage in a game of hungry, hungry fucking hippos. Oh my God. <laughs> uh, which ended up in, in, a, in a pretty spectacular fight, you know, between the dwarves, crow, and yeah, a giant hippopotamus. Uh, so we managed to survive, swim our asses to the shore. And we find this uh, peculiar old woman sitting on a stump, smoking a pipe. And uh, yeah, informs us that we're on her land. So, but she gives us license to stay on this land. So uh, while we uh, make our way to explore what had happened. So we make our way, we run into things from swarms of in insects, Crendor Sue and Crow lose their their charisma modifiers basically because they they are just pocked up with insect bites uh then we stumble onto a village it appears that the village had been wiped out we explored it and hence we got a new spinoff off uh the calamity campaign new new show called csi toad town so <laughs> that was the buzzword for that uh it's a great episode check it out there was a survivor we found out a little more and uh, yeah, we'll pursue this next time. Uh, and then, of course, that's if you know anything ever comes up with Scott having to ditch us again. So, <laughs> <laughs> but Calamity's going to be coming up again soon with uh, with our A squad, the A team, and yeah, it'll it'll be nuts. Do, so, do, 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 so do, do, do. the B sides and the A sides are kind of intermingling now. So. The A team, huh? Mm hmm. The A team and the B Who's squad. Murdoch? Who's Matt Murdoch? Who do you think? <laughs> Dave? Uh, mm hmm. Yeah. Dave, uh, yeah. Dave, the character, not Dave, you. You're not yeah, Matt Dave. Murdoch. Yeah. Yeah. Dave. The other Dave. So. Who's Mr. T? <laughs> that would be Dave, too. <laughs> <laughs> He can't be all of it. I mean, I know, I know. We're still working that out. <laughs> Basically, I'm the crazy one. So, 
Uh, I spent <clears throat> time trying to talk over you guys while I was muted, talking yeah. about the tri-generational and I just game, kept going. <laughs> and then trying to tell Carol to shut the hell up because she was trying you to talk try. over me. Uh, turns out it's easy to talk over me when you can't hear anything. Yeah, but, well, that's what happens when you mute yourself and always forget to take it off. <laughs> I don't want you guys to hear the yawn from how boring your explanations are. We can see it. I, mean, I, I know you're full of shit. Yeah, just a little, but not that much. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, I liked a few of your posts today. Nice. Hey, Thank you. Thank you're you. Welcome. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Sunday, tri generational Frank game. It's never open for anybody, but it is one heck of a time uh-huh. as a family of true murder hobos travel the world. Uh, and in this case, continue on their exploration of Corpus Keep. Uh, I have children and they speak inappropriately. The, my children do, not the tri generational Frank game. They're a delight to watch. And if you have three year olds, definitely have them playing while they're there in the room because it's the wife won't get mad oh. or anything. Oh, yeah. We're about to throw a 12 year old in that mix, too. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, when, you're, when your kid starts talking like them, then you wish you know who to blame. Yeah. My wife, obviously. <laughs> She's the one with with the mouth. No, she she <laughs> really does, you know. She watches them TikToks and listens to that little Nas X fella. Uh, nice. Anyway, uh, this Thursday we have the cacophony. 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 It's like an obsession. You're commercial not coming from through it all, Scott. But you know what? <laughs> I like to imagine your voice in there. Yeah, for some reason you're not coming over. He's speaking yes, really softly. softly. No, it's he's got that midnight oh, DJ voice. You he know. does. So, but guys, if you're interested in the one shot that is coming up this Sunday, it is going to be an 18th level uh, murder Spy? mystery. Yeah, giants and a Tarask is what there I is... heard from Frank. Nice. Oh, wait, 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 wait. It's going to be a kaiju battle. Sun- <laughs> wait, Frank's mm. going to have now run two games on Sunday? What? Yeah, that's right. It's so strange. <laughs> Frank is going to murder you. Only on Thursdays. Anyway, let's get on to the topic at hand because I am a dwarf. Diggy, diggy hole, digging a hole. Diggy, diggy. diggy. I am a dwarf and I'm <laughs> digging a hole. Diggy, diggy hole, digging a hole. Got it. (laughs) (laughs) That one's not a popular one, but I love that song so much. (laughs) All right, guys. We were talking about humans, and we got totally sidetracked uh, because of Carol last time. She just was busy talking over everybody. Threw everyone yeah. under the bus. How could she? I don't know. I don't know we're because get I on wasn't topic. We're going to stay on topic ago. tonight. I'm going to talk about talk. dwarves. I'm going to talk gray or origins. I wasn't even here Carol. last week. Hey, Carol. Fucker. Carol. Tell Give us a little the bit. the origin of dwarves. Oh, it depends on what setting you're talking about. What do you know about? I mean, are you talking oh, about like the Lord of the Rings being like the origin of Give dwarves? Give me anything, Carol. That's that's why are the... you on the show otherwise? <laughs> Beats the fuck out of me. Uh anyways, no, the origin of dwarves and actually a lot of D D races, I would say, goes back to, to Lord of the Rings. And that whole way we view them. It was a lot of a lot of how it was portrayed in the story. So <clears throat> I don't know. That's that's what I got. I mean Well that's before basically... all right, all right. Carol yeah. laid the groundwork. Let's start with Lord of the Rings. Who knows how the dwarves came to be in Lord of the Rings? Oh shoot! Now that I don't know, that would really, be a guys. Hu- that would really? be a husband oh, question, man. That's right. They were oh, hobbits the hobbit. first. No. Uh, hobbit first. What is the most or, uh, origin of all dwarves? They came from a rock, right? Oh, okay. Because they had a god that liked them and was like, you know what? I want children. Oh my gosh! No, this is the best part ever. Lord of the Rings, elves are like the first people right. in middle yeah. earth right yeah they're not dwarves were because uh-huh. the god of fire and earth was like you know what i want children and i don't want to wait around for these elves so i'm gonna make a bunch of dwarves and the yeah, gods I mean, got pissed at them 
it was one of those one of my it was like um on bay or it was something like that it was uh it was the uh, ale or something like yeah, that. yeah it, it wasn't it wasn't it wasn't honor it was it was one of his number twos so it wasn't like the number one um primary one but it was like one of the lieutenants and yeah that's right he uh he uh, made he made dwarves out of the rock because he wanted children of his own that's correct uh-huh. that's 100 correct and everyone got pissed at him because it's like dude elves are the first people of middle earth it's like oh i'll destroy them go to sleep and then Pretty elves nice. were made and the dwarves got to wake up and be like oh we're the second people to show up <laughs> I don't know. I just thought that was fascinating and hilarious. And I love dwarves. They're better than elves. What? But where, as far as you guys are concerned, where do you guys pick up on dwarves? Where do you get your lore from? Uh, let's start with David. Um, I remember my first uh, encounter with dwarves in literature. It wasn't Lord of the Rings. It was actually Germanic folklore. Mm. So, um you know, uh, one of the most famous dwarves from fairy tales is what Rumple Rumple Stiltskin. Yeah. Oh, he is a dwarf. I wasn't yeah. sure mm-hmm. what he, he was. Is a dwarf. He was a dwarf. Uh, and then, of course, I discovered the Hobbit, and you know, you can't beat Thorin and company. So, so uh, yeah, when Guillermo and you know. Robert Jackson were getting together with, uh, you know, getting the Hobbit created. Man, I, I was just all in. I started playing D and D again right around that time, and that's what I was creating. I was creating dwarves, you know. So, and one of my first characters when I was reintroduced to D and D was a dwarf. So, all right. And uh, Scott, how about you? Where's your introduction to dwarves, or what are your favorite dwarves? Well, you know, it's it's funny because I I I didn't start off reading with a lot of you know fantasy literature. Some of the uh, more um, I didn't start off with you know Lord of the Rings, for instance. I think probably my my introduction to fantastic literature was probably Michael Moorcock and the and the and the Elric series. Hmm. There weren't a lot of um, there weren't any dwarves in that series. Um, there were cursed races. There were like you know degenerate half races and half breeds but um but it was very much of a man-centric universe and so for a long time um i basically started and stayed within the realm of uh humans and then you know degenerative species or you know degenerates to that uh and maybe higher races uh and then all the different elementals that you would have in beasts. So that was always my my introduction. So dwarves probably I, I think I probably read Dragonlance before I read Lord of the Rings, to be honest with you. I now, would imagine I'm, I'm, that I'm, makes I, I'm, sense. I, I'm not I'm not counting the Hobbit because I read the Hobbit when I was probably six sure. and I don't remember I'm anything about to, it. Yeah. You know, <laughs> yeah. And, and like I said, I remember Bilbo in a ring and that's it. I don't remember I you know I Thorn and Company. I remember the big battle at the end. That that's what I remember. You know, yeah, the, the battle, battle of the five, five yeah, armies. Five armies. Yeah, I, re- I remember that part. But no, I think Dragonlance, and you know, was probably my my first introduction to the role that you know dwarves played in literature, as far as back. But I was playing D anD D by that point for for many years, and so I had you know I, in you know, ingested all of that. Uh, preconceived stereotypical, um, you know, one E and basic things about, you know, about what dwarves are. They carry an ax and they drink. Uh-huh. <laughs> that's, that's basically, that's what basically. What else is there to know? <laughs> exactly. You know, what, what, what else? Yeah. Um, they work the land. They also are good miners too. So Yeah. Good miners. Yeah. They, <laughs> they, they like, like, they like, you know, gems and things like mm-hmm. that and uh, great crafters of this and that. And, and I mean, I went back and probably, you know, read read a lot of stuff ever since then and have, and have a, explored more of it. And some of the more interesting stuff is probably the, you know, Germanic, fo- you know, folklore, you know, mm-hmm. talking about, uh, you know, the Middle March and, you know, a lot of, uh, um, you know, old Germanic folklore mm-hmm. about uh, about Russian dwarves. folklore yeah, too. Russian folklore too and Slavic folklore has a, has, has a whole lot of dwarves. 
Yeah. So th that was that was all really really good. But yeah, that that's where I drew my inspiration. I'm probably a little bit you know skewed towards you know elves, fairies, and men because of that. Because I didn't because my first books that I read didn't really have a dwarven hero. Hmm. I tell you, you're going to laugh, but my first uh, introduction into uh, dwarves as far as fantasy goes was through cinema, actually. So great little wow. movie we all know and love called Hawk the Slayer. The Hawk dwarf the in Slayer. that. Yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. Hawk the Slayer. That would eat anything. I, I almost rented that, that, I almost rented that this weekend. I, was, I don't I was, know I was... it either, Kyle. Oh, it's great. Okay, good. <laughs> it's great. You're not it the only awesome. one I know. <laughs> Hawk the Slayer is awesome. I'm sure Daddy. it does, actually. There's a lot of movies I haven't seen. To the, the, the elf could go back in time to shoot more arrows. <laughs> <laughs> what? Yes. <laughs> he would jump through the same Who door. Who do you think I, I base Crow on? My character Crow is based on crow from hawk the slayer so it's so great jack palance is in that movie it's yeah so it's great. awesome it's so bad it's awesome yeah, oh god it really it's is. one of those yeah that's oh, yeah. getting written down we're gonna be watching that one later uh that is good that is actually a good one for the kids to watch too yeah it is it is it's so, a good one yeah yeah, but if I do that, then they miss the tri generational Frank game, and I just yeah, feel that's guilty. true. <laughs> yeah. so, so, so cinema was my first introduction, really, Sam. Yeah, all right. Uh, gosh, yeah, no, you gave it already, Carol. Who famous dwarves? What do you got? All right. Well, I think the first time, the first, my first exposure to dwarves was probably Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. Mm. It's funny how they're like a fairy tale, how they're, you know, they're a fairy tale dwarf. But there are a lot of similarities between them and D&D &D dwarves. I mean, they would go, they didn't really, obviously, being Disney, they didn't really focus on the drinking. Although I think there was some drinking that was going on when they mm -hmm. had the party in the Disney movie. Oh, yeah. Uh, you know, and such. But when I grew up, I mean, actually, I think I'm pretty sure I read the Salvatore books with Bruner. Uh, before I read the Lord of the Rings, because I did read both. Uh, I both read both in college. My roommate, my college roommate, actually had the Salvatore books. And then I went out and picked up uh, the Lord of the Rings and I read through that like my junior and senior years. That's why I was reading that when I met my husband. So thank you, Lord of the Rings. Uh, <laughs> he, you know, he saw it and was like, hey, it's a cute geek. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, that's, I mean, that's, those are the one obvious choice. I mean, I remember, believe it or not, in, in, I forget what grade it was. I want to say somewhere in middle school, The Hobbit was actually like a required, was required reading, believe it or not. Right. Right. Which is mm -hmm. funny, because you know, usually fantasy is not the type of, stu type of stuff that they do in, in schools. But this time, yeah. Although that one, I don't, <laughs> I remember, obviously I know the story and such, but I, God, I'm trying to remember from back then. I don't really remember it a lot from back then. I do remember, yeah, the dwarves came in and they, they dragged, you know, uh, Bilbo out. I almost said Frodo. Frodo's the other series, not Frodo's the, the other one. Yeah. yeah that's <laughs> We're not talking about short people in hobbits today. But you mentioned also like which ones did I like, and I do. I like the ones. I like the the, the ones that sort of break the the mold, and that like Salvatore does write about. So I like um, oh frick, what's the druid well, one? Pickle Boulder Shoulder. Pickle. Pike. I think it's. I think it's. I thought it it's Pickle. Pickle. Yes. Pike. Yeah. Pickle Boulder the, Shoulder. Uh, I love that character. Yeah. Do it. Do it. Do it. He is amazing. I love that character, uh, because that's not your typical dwarf. I like and yet not at the same kid. time he feels so dwarfy. Too. He really does. Yeah, you're <laughs> right. But but dwarven druids, I mean, come on. That's They're like Earth shakers. His brother, I mean, definitely. his brother, I mean, I liked his brother too. His brother was more the stereotypical dwarf. But he would make fun of him. Ivan. I remember he'd make fun of him. Yeah, Ivan would make fun of him uh for for trying to be a druid. It was great. I said I liked I liked that dynamic in the books. Oh, my. yeah. I was. Go yeah, no. I'm trying to think. I was trying to think of all these dwarves to come to mind, and I honestly couldn't think of a lot of dwarfy dwarfs. I mean, you had Bruner, Battlehammer. You had yeah, Thorn, Oakenshield. 
Mm-hmm. Dibbledorf Puent. Of awesome. course. Yeah, dude, Salvatore does a really good job writing dwarves. And then, yeah, no, I was <laughs> like, oh, yeah, those are main dwarves. But the first ones I thought of was Pikel Boulder Shoulder. Mm. Uh, if you remember a Fredegar Rock Crusher. I do remember. Is that in the same books? Uh, about a character it been was a while. in Silvery Moon, and it was a dwarf oh. who had a tiny silver rock hammer. And he didn't like to be dirty. He was always clean. He knew a lot of things. He was a Oh, I think I have read that. The character sounds very familiar. But then, you know, anytime he got in a fight, it was go, 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 with this tiny rock hammer and ah, the blood and the guts. And then he'd be like, oh my gosh, I'm filthy. Oh, Maxwell Silver Hammer. <laughs> yeah, he... <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> and then, even going with a uh, more modern literature, you have a uh, uh, the Artemis Fowl series, which I am the youngest person here, so chances are I'm probably the only one who read it. Probably, <laughs> but uh, uh, you had uh, uh, a dwarf by the name of Mulch Diggums, and the dwarves in that book they didn't dig. They were like um, a type of mole, essentially. They mm-hmm. would eat dirt, unhinge their jaw, wow. and they would gather nutrients from the dirt. And then, wow. of course, out the back end would come out the rest of the dirt that wasn't any good. Uh, but this particular dwarf was a thief. Just go through, and if anything was going on, he was like that guy who had the condom full of cocaine, and he swallow it down and then he'd make a run for it wow more of a high fantasy movie and it's like yeah yeah, that's awesome i'm sorry guys i'm gonna be the one who's super excited about this i love no no it's awesome (laughs) no go for it go Um, for it one of my things with uh, yeah. dwarves uh, in in cult and not just in literature, but also uh, as far as games like Warhammer. Oh, it's you know, true. Warhammer and World of Warcraft. I mean, I've played How World of Warcraft. How can I forget Warcraft. that? God damn it! I was yeah. going to say that. So I was characters. Say, I mean, wow, they have dwarves. a rich, rich lore background <laughs> through through that video game, and one of the ones is. Uh, the the dwarves and the council of the three hammers and stuff like that there's wow. uh, a character on that that is really similar to brunor uh from D uh called magni bronzebeard and yep. then the yeah. whole bronzebeard yeah. clans and oh they're like so, so much fun that's so a- so much and then you got kurgan ironbrow or whatever from warhammer and the shield breakers and stuff like that those guys are awesome so Dwarves with big ass mohawks and yeah. oh yeah oh yeah I based Torvig on him <laughs> so and actually and it's mentioned in chat Varric from Dragon from Dragon Age is that I'm mm-hmm. pretty sure actually I've, I've I haven't played the game but but DJ yeah. has and I watched it. it yeah that's a good one yeah fantasy video I can't games believe I'm to that yeah. I was yeah. gonna say Wow Dwarves because they yeah they the World of Warcraft has a, a terrific series yeah. of dwarves. And you could play. I have a dwarf character. I uh, have several. <laughs> you know, the female players don't tend to make female dwarves for some reason. So I was like, it's I because made they one. don't look good They're in the bikini the plate mail. <laughs> so. Well, neither do gnomes, but people make those. Yeah, I know. It's weird. Uh, gamers are weird. <laughs> gamers are weird. Yeah. But yeah, I love. Uh, I said I and yeah, wild dwarves are ter- they're great too. Mm-hmm. They're they're all very much the same thing. Although you know what, well, I came up with them totally unconventional. Of course, you got dwarves like those, but then you got the other kind. You got the ones that are like they're called dwarves, but they're the ones who are more like suffer from dwarfism. Like mm-hmm. um, uh, what's his name, uh, Lannister there from uh, oh Tyrion, oh, Lannister. Yeah, Tyrion, Lannister, yeah, yeah, in literature, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, he's he's a dwarf. Yeah, but he's not that type of dwarf. He's not, you know, he's not part of a dwarven clan that goes around mines and drinks. No, Although he yes. drinks, he does drink a lot, though. Yeah, he drinks and he knows things. That that's his thing. <laughs> yeah, that's the like only line said, I know from that show. <laughs> he, he's uh, not a race. It's actually he, he's a human that uh, that 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 that's that that suffers from dwarfism, right? Mm-hmm. So that's... Yeah. 
yeah, uh, that's uh, that's a part. Now, here's something contrary to our notion of dwarves. Dwarves in comics, specifically Marvel comics, the dwarves are actually freaking giants. And if you saw watched oh. Endgame, Peter Dinklage's character is a dwarf. That's and they're right. Giants. That's so, right. Yeah, they're like the smallest among the giants. And as a matter of fact, in some uh, fantasy or whatever like that, I think particularly with D&D and all that, some dwarves are descended from giants. So hmm. so there, there's that kind of connection too. I've, I've heard that before. You know, I'm sure I somebody think in. There is, um, uh, uh, what's that game that you like, Carol, so much? Well, Pathfinder. Pathfinder, that's yeah. Pathfinder. I, believe I didn't say in anything. Galarian that the uh, fire god, fire giant god, uh, is rumored to have some hand in making dwarves. Uh, I don't but... know the lore that well. Damn it, Carol. God. god. That's the only reason we have you here to talk about Galarian <laughs> dwarves and wild dwarves. I and you know who brings I... it up? Me and David, it's like, ah, oh because God. every time I bring up the P word, I get flipping shit for it. So I try to do. stay away from yeah. it. You do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's some great. So she knew exactly what we were talking about. She's been dying to say <laughs> Pathfinder all night. No, no, mm -hmm. no, 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 no. Mm -hmm. No, I mean, I don't even think that was on the list. So I wasn't even thinking of it. <laughs> Now, one of the, like I said, my first introduction with the wars was through cinema. The other one was, we have it listed in our outline, the greatest dwarven movie of all time, Time Bandits. I yep. have no oh, idea what God. that is either. I oh, have... oh, my God, Kyle. <laughs> you put that on no, your list. I, I know. Yeah, I, I have seen it. It was a while it was a. It was a wild, it's an long time amazing ago movie. Yeah. Terry Gilliam directed, and yeah. it's one hundred percent concentrated evil. That's it. Oh my God, they got great, mm -hmm. great actors in really, that, really good that movie. Yeah. Really, really. Sean good. Connery is even in it, and it's amazing. Uh, yeah, it is a good movie. Sir, uh, Sir John Gildgood. I mean, it's mm -hmm. yeah, it's amazing. So. Yeah. So yeah, I just said I remember my husband loves that movie, so he made sure I watched it at some point. Oh yeah, Time Bandits rocked, man. I, that was one of my favorite movies growing up as a kid. Time Bandits. So, yeah, yep. I even know it. Uh, I remember some of the names and all that. I know Fidget. Uh, God, what's the other Daryl? Uh, they, yeah, you can't forget them. It's been a long time since I've seen it, so it's kind of slipping my memory. Yeah. But once you yeah. watch it. They're all compelling characters, each and every one of them. So. I would watch that, and then I would watch Buckaroo Bonsai across the fifth dimension. Always. Oh my god! Oh yeah. You had the two. That you had the two. My movies. husband loves. Yeah. He loves yeah, those I would, movies. I would. I would watch those two together. <laughs> oh yeah. Gimli. Nice. <laughs> Gimli. I waited too long. Absolutely. Let's Hi, talk Gimli. about Gimli. <laughs> oh. Um. So. Oh my goodness, I'm having a brain fart here. One of again. the greatest okay. actors in cinema plays him. Sean Rhys Davies. Wait, 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 Who is that? Sean Rhys Davies? Uh, no, Indiana yeah, Jones. Yeah, I know. Indiana yeah. Jones, obviously. Yeah. I knew that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there you go. No. No, I mean, yeah. Greatest dwarf. Oh, well, okay. No. Uh, uh, after having seen The Hobbit, I love Dane Ironfoot. Yeah. Billy O'Connolly. <laughs> absolutely yes <laughs> yes that that Would was perhaps his last movie and that yeah. was he was amazing in that he was yeah, really he was amazing really oh so. I, <laughs> speaking of dwarves uh uh they have the extras where he talks about getting in and where he learns how to walk like a dwarf because you gotta <laughs> gotta learn how to be a dwarf to practically oh yeah and he starts by telling this story of of uh, a guy in glasgow wanting to be a a a fighter a bar fighter mm -hmm. he says, that's that's uh, this is how i compare a dwarf and uh, he's talking about oh well how do i become a good fighter he's like well all you gotta remember is one three it's like oh okay one three one three where's two two is where he hits you <laughs> <laughs> it's true <laughs> and 
So yeah, no, let's let's get into drink that. and drink and fight. That's... Drink and drink and fight and dig a hole. That's it. No, yeah. so let's get down. What is a dwarf? As soon as we talk about it, we've mm-hmm. already kind of hit it a little bit here. We got fighters. They mine. Uh, they have to have atrocious Scottish accents. Oh, if you <laughs> watch the B side, you know that's not necessarily true. <laughs> oh, 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 who who does not have a Scottish accent? Oh, wow. brother Coda, he's got an Australian accent. <laughs> That Jesse monster. plays him with an Australian accent. Oh, okay. <laughs> and Brother Cup, I, I think he's a dwarf. I'm, I'm not sure. Or he's just small stature. Uh, anyway, uh, yeah, Rob plays him. And he does him with a British accent. So they're trying to, you know, they're kind of kind of going against the grain with that. So, But dwarves with Australian accents is just hilarious. So. That would be good. Mm-hmm. I can imagine that little hat that folds mm-hmm. up on the side you got the pin oh yeah <laughs> right we got here ourselves a vein of gold and it's glorious but you gotta watch out there's a monster right around the corner here i hit him with my with my mace al kabong yeah. <laughs> so jesse, wait, we... jesse is flawless playing it yes so wait, are we actually going over like qualities of the stereotypical yeah, qualities let's talk of about the stereo- yeah. We're talking about race. Yeah. Let's talk about yeah. stereotypes because they're dirty. They're so dirty. <laughs> uh, sorry, I, I'm I got well, the shot from the earlier earth, today man. and I have to rub it out. So uh I, I was gonna say I love that aspect about how the whole thing is like they're from the earth, they're low to the ground. So I think that's that's part of where that comes in. And there's solid like rocks. Mm-hmm. You know, there's a lot of earth earthy um elements to them. But they're also the other thing that I think uh that gets done a lot is they're suspicious of magic. They're very practical. Superstitious. You know, so very superstitious mm-hmm. uh as a as a rule. Oh, yeah. Um and, and I think as, that's as once again, it's negative. the whole earth. You know, earth is is sure. is here it's something you know very real and magic is not very real miracles although they do have gods so i mean mm-hmm. they're they're okay with clerical magic yeah. which i always thought was interesting yeah, yeah i was gonna say as long with those negative aspects you know we also have that dwarven greed that desire yeah. to uh, sometimes ambition whether it's creating the greatest weapon ever wielded by any warrior, whether it's human or dwarf, or whether it's just desire to have an immense horde, like if we talk about Thorn Oakenshield and his dragon sickness. Oh, yeah. That was was, awesome. It was. It's so sad. I liked him. (laughs) What do you got over there, Scott? What you got? As far as stereotypes i mean <laughs> what well, are we missing it, no no you're not you're not missing anything actually mm-hmm. um really? it's just it's just funny that uh that, that a lot of the stereotypes that people attribute um dwarves to they all come from literature in, in one way or the other right mm-hmm. i mean and then the way we come through in D and D, I i mean we have to we have to understand we have to at least recognize that you know that you know, gary guy Gax, you know, initiated the idea of the races almost directly from Lord of the Rings. I mean, he his first iteration of halflings were called hobbits. He until he got in got in trouble with uh, with uh, with uh, with uh, you know the um, Lord of the Rings guys. So you know he he had to rename them and call them halflings. So a lot of them, um, a lot of the character traits that you see in in the D and D game come strictly from or straight from. A lot of the um, descriptions that uh, that uh, Mr. Tolkien gave to dwarves, and so a lot of that gets carried into the through the um, through the uh, you know games that we play. But but the stereotypical dwarves and that they have as it, it broadens and and, and actually in, in a way makes them a lot more in depth than than a lot of the other races. Okay. Elves are almost done always as magical fairy creatures. Okay, almost always as magical fairy creatures. And in, in essence, elves are more stereotypical than dwarves. 
because dwarves can be played a lot of different ways. You know, you 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 see a lot of dwarves. I'm trying to stick to just the the, the stereotypical side of, of how it plays out in in D and D. You you can play dwarven paladins. You can play play dwarven fighters. You can play dwarven rogues. You and we see that you can play dwarven bankers. You can play dwarven merchants. You can play dwarven stonecrafters. You can play dwarven um, uh, you know, clerics, you know, that's, that's a, a min max character. Now it's a dwarven cleric that, that mm. you see people play to a lot. Now you don't see a lot of dwarven magic users. That's true. Mm-hmm. You don't, you don't see a lot of dwarven magic users and that's typically, but I always thought it'd be kind of cool because, you know, magic users are squishy. And of course, dwarves have the bonuses to your constitution. Right. But mm-hmm. the point. other, yeah, but the other side to it is that, you know, it's wisdom instead of instead of intelligence as your spell casting. So th- there's a lot to be said for for a well played dwarf and the stereotypes. There's a lot of tropes for them. I remember one book that I used to read a lot by Jack L. Chalker, or Jack C. Chalker, the um, the Dancing God series. And literally every race was set by a book, the Book of Rules. That even if you didn't want to play or it didn't want to be like this, eventually you just kind of would, you know, when you had, you know, if a character got turned into another, you know, sex or another race or something like that, after a while, the rules would kind of force you to play along with that. So if you got turned into a dwarf, even if you started out as a human, pretty soon you would start, you know, drinking and cursing and liking, (laughs) liking, you know, uh, liking (laughs) golden stones, you know, you just kind of couldn't help it, you know? So these stereotypes were enforced in a way, but um, the fact that, that dwarves have such a broad history from, from everywhere from snow white, which again comes from, from, as you would mention, David German mythology, right? Mm -hmm. That's, that's where a lot of that comes from. Um, it's so broad, people bring their own interpretations of, uh, of what a dwarf is supposed to be. So yes, there are stereotypes. Whenever, whenever I have a dwarven NPC, I can't help but go into a Scottish brogue. I can't help it. I can't help it. <laughs> Unless you're like Frank, it ends up well, turning you know, into Russian. <laughs> with the dwarven oh stereotypes, you know, it's really easy to be like, oh, he's speaking in a Scottish accent. He's a dwarf. That's who I'm talking exactly, to. Exactly, exactly. And I, now, players I, buy into that. I, I, I was able to avoid it one time by, by playing a very dumb dwarf. And so I had him play like, um, duh, uh, yeah, um, so you need to take the rock and give the rock to me. And that's the best I can do. I, <laughs> I, was, I, was, I was focused on not doing Scottish fucking rules. Nice. So I, I can't. I can't I, I ended do up it. playing him like I ended up playing like a half wit, you know, and that and then so I, I, Scottish half wits. <laughs> How about playing up. a dwarven magic user that was raised by elves? So I think that would, would have, be interesting. I think he would have problems. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying, you know. And so he would have problems. He would always try to be taller. You know, mm-hmm. I wish it was a little bit taller. I wish it was a baller. I wish it had that... a it was cute. I would call her, you know, he would, he would yeah. oh. around, you know? Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, thank you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, it, hey. it's. Sorry. Go ahead. I'm sorry, Carol. Go on. No, I thought, no, I thought you were done. Now finish your answer. Cause uh, this, no, this I'm, is done. A question. I'm done. I, 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 I'm, I'm done. Well, we Good were time. talking the stereotypes, breaking them. Carol, sorry, I'm sorry. I'm talking about No, 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 no. Actually, this is a question that somebody posed on the chat. And it said, uh, and I'm not sure about this. Uh, aren't dwarves stereotypically afraid of water? Are they? Some are, yeah. Some is it a are, stereotype? In fact, if you go into um, Tales of the Yawning Portal, uh, you will encounter an ancient legendary hammer by the name of Whelm. Mm-hmm. Which, along with keeping you underground, keeps you away from water. One of them does. Oh wow! There's yeah, yeah, there's Wave and Whelm like... and Black Razor. Yeah, that's Thank right. Thank you. Yep. Yeah. Now, one so... of them doesn't like the water so much. One of them does like open land. Uh, yeah, no. Where? So let's talk about breaking stereotypes again. We, as well, let's kind of move on to the next topic a little bit lore-wise. Uh, all of us here uh, have DM'd 
somewhere, if not on this show. <clears throat> There's reasons you guys for that. <laughs> write dwarves in, and when you're trying to homebrew it a little bit, how do you make your dwarves unique other than making them a complete and utter half wit? And let's start with David on this one here. Uh, actually, um, uh, the kids that I DM'd at the comic shop were, um, a lot of them played dwarves. And one of the things that we did to break out of some of the stereotypes, we had a dwarf in our party that was a noble. Mm -hmm. And that kind of played into it too. So he liked it because, you know, he had that, you know the underground house they had this they had that you know mm -hmm. so but um yeah you know the the kids they didn't play the stereotypes too much they, they were just being themselves but every once in a while they'll just kick it into overdrive and start playing you know the drinking part very very well i mean you know so ah, and then we call their parents and mm -hmm. get them some old and i tell them and... i tell them i had nothing to do with that <laughs> Organized crime. I'm sorry. I'm Such a bad influence, playing. Dave. Yep. Really? Terrible. Gosh. <laughs> no, I always play my dwarves as uh, guild um, thieves, organized crime figures. That's how I always play them. I'm, when cool. I'm writing them up, I'm, always, a... I'm always having them, you know, as, as the front of being like, you know, bankers, guilds, merchants, things like that. But mm -hmm. they're always the power behind the power. They're always the organized crime bit. They're always, you know, that's why I always we, write we've, in my campaign. We've got to do a series of one shots. Peaky Blinders, they're dwarves. Oh, perfect. I'd have to, a, I'd have yeah, to watch yeah, yeah. that show. I've never yeah, seen that. would be good. That Peaky Blinders, all dwarves. Yep. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'd probably, probably cut you off, Carol. No, no. All I said is I've never seen that show. It's a good show. It's a good show. So Irish mobsters. So that would be pretty right. That'd be really good for a bunch of dwarves. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So Carol, what are you doing with dwarves to uh, offset them or even, you know, play into their stereotypes a lot more? Well, I mean, you guys, if you've watched the one shots, will know I play a dwarf named Torga. I think she sort of fits. I don't really, I don't really break any stereotypes. Other than fact, I don't, I can't do a Scottish accent anyways. So I don't, I tend to make her a bit louder and forceful, but uh, I don't, but I don't have the, the accent because I can't do accents for shit. Uh, but she does like to drink. She likes to brawl. She's not, and she's a minor. I mean, she's got the, she's why she's got a sledgehammer. Does she that, have a beard? <laughs> No, no, oh. I do like I do sideburns. Actually, sideburns. Yeah, She's got sideburns. Maybe yeah. okay. a little Woo. bit, but I don't really. Yeah, but you know what? I'm I'm the type that's not into. The, that's a stereotype the, a lot yeah, of people overlook. If they play a female dwarf, yeah, no, I tend they're, to. They're clean. I, yeah, I tend to break. Although I've seen some artwork of bearded female dwarves, and it actually does work. Uh, as soon so. as Frank decides <laughs> to run that pretty, pretty princess one shot of his, I will indeed play a beautiful dwarven princess. Actually, with a I, beard? Pl I play oh, with a dwarven yeah. princess named Brigitta in, in one of our oh, home wow. campaigns. Mm -hmm. uh, cool. She's a mute. She uh, she got That's injured cool. in battle, mm -hmm. uh, cut cut by a cursed blade. And yeah. Oh, so. neat. It'll yeah. get you every single hey, time. Hey, that's that's how I avoid. That's how I, what I should have done to that's avoid. That's how I avoid the accent. The accent. <laughs> like it's just She's a talk. Yeah. But I like to. Unfortunately, I like to play characters that do talk. Uh, a little too Isn't much. Isn't that the truth? <laughs> <laughs> She's not totally one of my most. She's not one of my most talky characters, though. She's. I don't remember. She's got okay charisma and she's got okay intelligence. I don't I don't play her as dumb, that's for sure. One um, of the things that I like though with uh, dwarves like um that we were talking about as far as like classes and stuff sure. like that. Like I said, the dwarven princess and stuff. Uh, one of the other things that I like to do is dwarves as artificers. You know, yeah. play into the craftsman thing. Sure. That way you get a little bit of the the spell casting in with it too. 
Mm-hmm. So don't let the yeah. gnomes have it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah, I can see that. No, I it's totally I like can. Gnomes. I can totally see that too. It it makes to me artifice. It totally works with. Oh, because to I, me the craftsman. Go ahead. I'm all set. I I was just said uh, one of the thing I like to play in my campaigns. I forgot dark dwarves. Dwargar. Yes. Dwargar. Dwargar. Yeah. Love we didn't those. hit I, all the races of dwarves. I I, I got to play. Oh uh, damn I, it! I had a whole thing playing like uh, like Dwargar, um, Shadow Anti Paladins, to where mm. they had like uh, there's like this nice little I think was it, oh it's in like the Tome of Beasts I believe they have a whole little subset of them that are ruled where they've gone crazy and mad. Mm-hmm. And uh, and they're ruled by like a little like a little baby infant, you know, little thing that you know steals people's minds and stuff like that. Oh, man. Nice, that a was baby with an elder baby. brain. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh. And it keeps, you know, <laughs> stealing into other people's babies and everyone around them. All the Duergar are just ah, shit crazy. Oh know? God, they usually are. <laughs> and uh, and and they, uh, you know. Oh man, that, those were those were fun. Those I would fun. like to play a Durgar. Yeah, I really yeah, would. They're just really freaking evil, you know. Just just nice and down and dirty evil, you know. That that there that was that was a fun little little side quest. I had I had my characters on. I was a okay. DM for that, and that was a fun fun side quest. Durgar, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, one of the dichotomies about dwarves too, they hate aberrations. So I've played oh, that a lot. Dorger, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. Turns out being enslaved by a bunch of illithids makes you a little touchy around. Or beholders, yeah. Can't, yeah. can't imagine why. Not, me neither, right? I know. Right. Huh? Guys, it's the end of the night. Uh, let's give you guys some time. Come up with a cool dwarf NPC for me. Follow stereotype. Yeah. Don't follow stereotype. I don't care. For me, I have Commander Grizzlebottom. Mm. who is a transmuter wizard uh, dwarf who is essentially the police in the town. He will uh, turn a little section of your stone door into wood, bash it down, and then do a thunder blast in the room before he breaks in and starts smashing kneecaps in. And so, what have you got, Carol? Who's not not a damn this. thing, right? Because yeah, uh, you, come on. you knew you were gonna do this. So, so uh, let me it. see. Number five, five on our script. Say. Create a Create dwarf NPC. We never get that far. And who says that? You know. All I, right, let's get I, Carol wait, wait, some wait, wait, time wait, wait. here. No, no, no. Guys, I got follow it. us I got on yeah. Twitch. Follow us on Twitter oh, if you want to take a look at our sense. YouTube archive. You can do that. And Carol, go. All right. So basically, I was thinking. I like the thought of a dwarven paladin. You know, who is basically bodyguard for for the clerics for the temple i and like the thought of that is... oh i gotta come up with a name it's oh like my it's an god NPC or something <laughs> that's that's you know i hate coming up with names of the fly um well let's see his name is wood plank water glass no there you go <laughs> no 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 i mean i i love uh i love i love the last name orc smash i love the last name orc smasher um oh and your first name what's a good for uh grilda grilda orc smasher there you go there we it go be a female nice. because i play girls all right i know david read the script so david What's your NPC you got for us? I would have to go with Brigitte. Uh, Brigitte is, um, she was a dwarven princess. She was thought for, uh, left for dead on the dwarven battlefield uh, fighting aberrations. Her throat was cut uh, in the lands where the battle had occurred. Uh, Dwarves of the Circle of Fire rescued her they cauterized her wound unfortunately they could not restore her speech um she's um making a living in water deep as a chef as you know with her partner uh a bard of eloquence named um yeah uh, y'all are gonna laugh ramsey so like gordon ramsey so, oh god yeah and and her familiar is a little cat that likes to sleep in the hearth and heats the the kettles and things like that so 
All right, and Scott, to end the night like a fine foam at the bottom of a beer glass (laughs) that you don't bother drinking anymore because there's nothing there. What do you got for us? Uh, I have a dwarven rogue slash kind of bard um, named Patches, and uh, he's kind of the lord of a or the you know boss of a local of a local crime syndicate. You know, um, runs all the runs all the taverns runs all the all the winches and uh you know you don't want to mess with patches and it's because he has a patch on his eye but what no one knows is he has a little iron stone over his head that uh that gives him uh you know um like uh um true seeing all over and so so you can't really get around him yeah uh, like the he, funny he, thing he, is the ion stone also him. has a patch that's why he's patches <laughs> <laughs> patch is, yeah <laughs> and uh yeah just super high dexterity and uh you know um um just very very nimble um very quick uh very handy with his knives you know and that's uh very feared uh, very feared and uh and, and I do everything in Greyhawk, so he's you know, he's in Greyhawk. Um, that's that's where I that's where I kinda have him at patches. Nice. All right. Well guys, that is the show tonight. I honestly I could talk about dwarves and if these people hang on in the green room, I will go crazy over dwarves. Oh, oh no. yeah. But we're, we're not gonna do it. that. Bye. We're gonna say good night to you guys. Thanks to our sponsors, Pirate Dog Dice and Odd Fish Games for their adventure stinks. Sense. Sense. Make your game stink. <laughs> also, also, how to RPG with your cat, which will be coming mm-hmm. to Kickstarter soon. And TM the Shine Project and the Shine Project, which will make your writing bunch of writing prompts to make your writing better. And more important, better. look out for Carol's Chlamydia Fence Post. What new scent coming out? There's wood. <laughs> uh, uh, it's uh, not me, by the way. Odor and. Uh, Good night, everybody. Wave at the camera because I couldn't think of anything else.